give us your analysis within an Italian context as well as a wider European context about how the Eurozone crisis has disproportionately affected women and I know that you've got some absolutely startling statistics and evidence of how it's affected women and families mm -hmm. more. Yes, uh, well, uh, I would like to start by saying that uh, uh, when we look at the uh, crisis, and especially the impact of the crisis on the working class, generally there are very few, few works that looks at also at the gender dimension. And uh, uh, of course now there is a long uh, stream of literature speaking about how capitalistic, the capitalistic system is not neutral, not only regardless to class, but also to gender. So uh, the, capitali the capitalist economy has different impacts on men and women, and therefore has different impacts on working men and working women. And this is something that we have to keep into mind uh, if we really want to see how the crisis has affected the, the uh, working class. Uh, t taking into account, as I said, that the working class is different according to the gender. So uh, what happened with the crisis is that uh, uh, if you just look at the crisis by looking at uh, uh, the labor market and uh, uh, so that means the system of production, generally in most European countries uh, uh, the, the crisis hit more uh, men than women because it was a typical industrialized crisis so it affected a lot of the manufacturing sector the construction uh, constructing sector and stuff like that uh, but this is just half of the story and the, uh, my point uh, uh, in my research is that uh, if you really want to have an idea of how really the crisis has affected men and women, you have to uh, take into account not only the system of production, but also the system of uh, uh, the social reproduction system. So that means you have to take into account all the kind of labor, voluntary labor, domestic labor, care labor, whatever you want to call it, which is done mainly by women which is done by women within the family and stuff like that. So when you look at this, you have to uh, put an, uh, into, let's say, the analysis also a variable relating to the uh, fiscal policies of the government, because we know that the fiscal policies are relating to the possibility to create a, a good welfare system that will help women to uh, enter the labor market to do less caring work or less domestic work and exactly to be able to get into the labor market. So uh, the, the main point is therefore to have a, a, a whole uh, system to look at which is not made only by the, pro uh, the production system but also by the social reproduction system. So if you do this and if you start uh, looking at the crisis with this idea in mind, we, you don't have to, to look only, as I said, to the labor market and the production system, but also to uh, the so-called social reproduction system. And here is the point. The point is that not only the crisis, let's uh, go a bit uh, back in the past, even before the crisis, women were affected by the so-called neoliberal agenda because the neoliberal agenda in most uh, advanced countries and especially in the European Union meant always and all, uh, always uh, a cut on social expenditure. So that means that there are less social and public services for women or anyway social and public services for the domestic uh, labor and for the care labor. So even before the crisis uh, we could say that uh, this neoliberal agenda is something that affects women more than men. With the crisis, what has happened is that uh, although there was a, a very short period in which most countries, most advanced countries, tried to um, reduce the impact of the crisis with the so-called Keynesian policies, so they make the so-called anti-crisis uh, anti fiscal packages, None of these uh, fiscal package consideration, and this uh, is uh, has been uh, uh, underlined both by the European Commission and the OECD. So uh, nobody actually looked at how these anti-crisis fiscal packages affect women more than men, or or in which way they affect women and men. Of course, we're speaking about working women and working men, but now we are uh, in a 
different situation in certain European countries, Italy is one of them, but let's say in most European countries, and the situation is that of the fiscal austerity. We are going back to the idea that we have to, to, uh, to look after uh, uh, the public uh, deficit and the public debt, and therefore we are implementing austerity policy. And all these austerity policies immediately translate into cut in social expenditure, cut in social services, cut in education, cut in the uh, health system, and stuff like that. And this means that uh, it's, gonna, it's becoming more and more difficult for women to uh, be able to enter or to stay in the labor market because they cannot, they, 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 they are not able to put together the paid work in the labor market with the amount of the care and domestic work they do at home. This is a very typical situation, for example, in Italy, and especially in the south part of Italy, where the welfare system is very bad. And what, what we see is that there are lots of women that are now withdrawing from the labor market. They're not looking for jobs anymore because they're so desperate and they know that either they cannot find it, or also they, if they found it, they won't be able to have a job and look after family that they prefer to withdraw from that. So, uh, as an in conclusion, was what we can say is that uh, the, the, maybe uh, at the beginning the, the crisis hit uh, men more than women because men were the people that uh, the, the, yes the people that lost more jobs compared to women. But in the long run, and especially due to the European uh, European Union or uh, let's say the euro area and the uh, choice, the economic choices within the euro area it's very likely that women will be affected much more than men because of this uh, austerity policy. Giovanna, thank you very much for such a, an articulate analysis of the, the gender dynamic that precedes the Eurozone crisis. You're absolutely correct in that analysis, but which has been exacerbated as a result of the Eurozone crisis. Could you perhaps Giovanna, illustrate and crystallise some of the negative consequences that are disproportionately affecting women. Have you got some statistics in terms of the volume of women who are now having to leave the labour market because of the situation that you've described or perhaps how they are being disproportionately affected because of the cuts to entitlements and cuts to public expenditure. Could you perhaps just illustrate that in some concrete numbers, if that's possible? Well, uh, the point is that I do have uh, some numbers, but they are more related to Italy because uh, I was looking at the Italian sure. situation. That, that would be interesting, <laughs> even just looking at Italy. Yes, uh, uh, what, what, what you can see in the Italian situation is uh, uh, a typical situation of, of the so-called uh, developing country, although Italy is supposed to be a developed country, because to start with, there is already a very strong difference in the, part, in the, labor, particip in the uh, labor market participation between men and women. That means that Italy has a very low rate of women participation in the labor market exactly due to these, uh, let's say, inexistent or very badly functioning welfare system, uh, which is typical of the so-called Mediterranean countries. Uh, so if uh, the European average uh, of the women participating in the labor market is around 40, 44%, in Italy, even before the crisis, in Italy we are around 39, so we are very less, very uh, very lower compared to the European average. Then, uh, um, what is interesting is that uh, since uh, 2011, uh, both uh, Eurostat and then, of course, the Italian uh, uh, National Statistic Institute decided to collect this, the data about the so-called uh, not labor force according to the reason why they are not in the labor force. And one of the reasons is exactly family responsibility. So that means that you can now actually count how many people are withdrawing from the labor market because of family responsibilities. In Italy, uh, of course, they're all estimates, and so they're not the actual number, but in Italy, uh, this, this population is something around 5 million at the moment. 
and uh, uh, it's very gendered because of these people that are uh, out of the labor force. Uh, 91% uh, are uh, women, so that means that most of them are women. And uh, the reason, when you look at the reason why they do not look for jobs and they don't want to get into, to enter the labor market, of this 91%, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, all women, 70% of of this of these women say that it's exactly for family responsibilities. So that means that. The, uh, on one side, the withdrawal of the welfare state, the continuous the, uh, withdrawing of the welfare state, which started before the crisis, as I said, it started with this neoliberalism coming back, with the uh, uh, privatization of uh, a lot of um, social services, stuff like that, together with the crisis, makes it impossible for women to go into the labor market. And so they decided to withdraw. And family responsibility is with family responsibility is the first cause for women to not to look for jobs, not to, to become so-called discouraged workers. And uh, uh, under, of course, under family responsibility, uh, we put uh, I put everything that I was I was saying before. So that means that the difficulty to uh, reconcile reconcile a paid job with family responsibility stuff like that. And this is a very um, strong and difficult situation in Italy, but that we share with other European countries, the so-called Mediterranean countries. There is a reason why we, uh, when, let's say, when we classify countries or capitalism, we classify it according, um, according to some kind of stereotypes. Uh, the so-called Mediterranean countries or the so-called family countries uh, familiar countries are those countries like Italy, Greece, Portugal, Spain, where you actually speak about a welfare system, but in, uh, sorry, a family wel welfare system, but in reality, it's we should call it a women welfare system because all the private welfare system carried out by uh, within the family is carried out by women. So this is um, is becoming already a problem for women to go back to go to enter the labor market or to go back. So I think that, as I said before, if we look at the data, in Italy at least, you can actually visualize the, the quantity of, of women that are not looking, that do not, they don't get into the labor market anymore because of this fiscal austerity and everything that is going on. Giovanna, th thank you very much for that response and absolutely fascinating. And the same issues and dynamics are at play within the UK economy as well. So it's not just the, the characterization of the Mediterranean family welfare system. To uh, the same extent, although operating in different ways, women are being disproportionately affected within the UK system. And, and it can be not related to the job market, but wider than that, as you've illustrated, such as accessing public services, where there is public expenditure cuts, but also in relation to the UK economy, Giovanna, and I'd be interested in hearing about the Italian experience, is that the form of jobs that are being so-called created within the economy are often precarious forms of work, are what we are calling zero hours contracts, where you do not know how many hours that you will have to go to work for, and the inevitable consequences on family responsibilities whereby women just can't, at the drop of a hat, leave the home and go for X, Y and Z hours of work. In terms of the new jobs that are being created in the, since the economic recession and depression, of course they are not like for like jobs. And is the Italian experience very similar to the UK experience where new jobs are being created but are even more precarious than the ones that were there pre-crisis? Uh, in the Italian situation, what is happening is that uh, um, there are new jobs, let's say, created, but uh, uh, they are very, very low-skilled jobs. In fact, uh, the um, uh, well again, looking at the Italian data, you can see that from the middle of 2013, women are actually gaining occupation and jobs according to men. But the problem is that they are very low-skilled jobs, and what, uh, 
the, some literature, anyway, or some studies are trying to pick up this uh, phenomenon that is happening, which is that women that really do want to get into the labor market and generally uh, uh, agree to accept any kind of jobs, they are going back to do the jobs that we used to give to migrant women. So that means uh, uh, the housewife, the house caring, or uh, stuff like that. Uh, and in fact, uh, a real, a, a proper analysis should take into account not only the, the class dimension and the gender dimension, but also a dimension or, of, uh, I don't know how you say it in English, ethnicity or migrant. Yes. Because, uh, exactly, because what is happening in Italy is that, uh, and I think in most European countries, is that since migrant women and migrant men can stay in the country only if they, if they have a job, since lots of Italian women are going back to do this housework job in other families, so paid to work in other families as housework or house caring, caregivers and stuff like that, they are actually uh, crowding out migrant women that are uh, obliged to go back to their country. So there is, a, I mean, the situation is very contradictory and is very bad because uh, it, it seems that is, uh, um, it doesn't take into account only the gender dimension, as I said, but it sh should, we should have we should have a look also at the ethnicity dimension to try to see all the different implications. And this is what is happening in Italy: very low skilled, uh, very low skilled jobs for women, and they are all relating to this kind of housework, in a caregiver kind of jobs, which means that they, as I said, push away migrant women that used to do this job in Italy. And this is a very bad situation in Italy, up to now. Giovanna, thank you. And I, I think that's such an important dynamic which is at play because, as I'm sure you will agree, what that does in many respects is mask the true crisis that is affecting women and the ethnic dimension to it as well because of migrant women. Because what you're describing is a situation where Italian women are re-entering the job market in jobs that were currently filled by migrant workers yeah. and in particular the jobs are low paid so when you see the headline statistics of more women entering the labour market the powers that be put a positive spin on that because more women are entering the job market but in reality, it is exacerbating the problem because they are coming into the labour market on lower wages in more precarious forms at the same time as public expenditure being cut. So there is, a, there is multiple dynamics that play here that allow governments to portray the situation as recovering when in many respects the situation is getting worse. And I, I would like to just move it on to that point, Giovanna, and one of the last two questions I would like to put to you. Why do you think the gender dynamic of the Eurozone and indeed the European depression has not been given the sufficient attention that it deserves? Now, I would love to hear your views on that. I'm not going to speak because I am a man. So I would really like to hear why you think the issues of gender are not being addressed and that when more women are entering the job market in Italy, the powers that be portray this as a positive development, when as in we've discussed, it's actually making the situation worse in many respects. Well, good question. Uh... I do have a kind of uh, simple answer, which is uh, uh, because there is no a feminist movement anymore. That means that uh, uh, women are uh, women are not considered both by the trade unions or by the party of the left. They're not generally considered as the uh, a social subject. Uh, and on, on on one side and on the other side, as I said, there is no a strong feminist movement movement anymore, uh, and this is a big problem. 
um, if you, if you, I think it happens in the UK as well, when you look at uh, gender dimension of, of, of any aspects, uh, generally there are most important aspects like uh, the problem with the violence or the problem with prostitution or stuff like that. But the idea that the working class is also, let's say, different according to gender is something that is very difficult to, I don't know, to, 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 to speak about, even among the so-called male comrades. Uh, it's very difficult to, to understand that uh, uh, being a male worker or a, a male member of the working class and a female member of the working class has different implication and has different problems. Of course, there are some questions that unify them because they're all working class, but then there are some specific questions relating to gender. And this, I think, uh, is not is difficult to understand for as I said male comrades. So above all, it's very difficult to understand by people that are not even, are not even comrades. So I'm speaking. I'm thinking about uh, uh, the U U in the European Union technocracy or stuff like that. On the other side, it's also true that there is no a, a, a feminist movement anymore. And this, I think, is a big problem because uh, we don't fight. We and in in this we, I mean exactly women. We don't fight or. There are very few uh, right now. Are not, uh, the, the new generation are not used to be feminist as it used to be uh, in the 70s with the big uh, feminist movements. And therefore, uh, when gender is on the agenda, is also is only relating to the fact that Oh, it's good for women to have a job because this will increase the GDP. Or uh, it's better, it's, it's good for an economy to to get, uh, give jobs to women because this will increase the GDP and stuff like that. But this is not exactly my idea of thinking about gender. So I think there is a political problem, and uh, I don't know in the UK, but I can be very mean uh, towards my male comrades. In the in Italy, it's very difficult, as I said, also when you speak with comrades to try to make them understand that there is a gender dimension. There is a trade union dimensions because trade unions think that the capitalistic system is neutral according to gender. And this is horrible because when they propose any kind of law or agreement or whatever, they, they don't have any kind of gender consideration in their stuff. And then there is a problem of the European Union no, as uh, the institution of the European Union, which, which do not have any kind of mild gender consideration at all. So I think that it's more, it's easier, let's put it in this way, it's easier to show that the capitalistic system is not class neutral. So people like us, I mean, among comrades, it, it's quite easy to understand that there is one class and another class and there's a class struggle, then to speak and to make it understand that the capitalistic system is not, is not neutral also when gender is relating. And that's my answer.